sin. God wants to make things disappear in your life. The old ways, guilt, unforgiveness, resentment, tragedy, grief, sorrow. He wants those things to disappear. Why are you and I holding on to those, reliving those things over and over again? Let it go. It's like that song from Frozen, right? Elsa, let it go, let it go. Holmes, let it go, okay? And let God give you the good stuff. All right. Whoever is a believer is a new creation. The old way has disappeared. A new way of living has come into existence. Let God let you live, man. Let that new way come into existence and reality in your life. Reminds me of a funny story between a pig and a chicken. They say, the farmer has been so good to us. The farmer gives us food. The farmer prepares us a place to live. The farmer keeps us safe and protected and secure. We should do something for the farmer. And so the chicken says, hey, let's give the farmer a breakfast of bacon and eggs. <laughs> you get where I'm going? Bacon and eggs, man. The pig says, you fool. Chicken, a breakfast of bacon and eggs means a tasty contribution from you. But for me, it's total commitment. All right? It's total commitment. Sometimes that's what it takes. Jump my brother, jump my sister, trust that bungee cord, let it go. Metamorphosis is also how we describe how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. Now, once upon a time when I was a wee little boy, um, our class had a project. He raised silkworms. Well, Easter break came around and someone had to care for the silkworms. And so the teacher asked, who would like to take the silkworms home? And oh, a lot of children raised their hands. But the teacher said, you have to have mulberry trees because silkworms have to eat mulberry leaves. Well, I thought about it and I raised my hand. I have two very large mulberry trees in my backyard. And so I was chosen to take the silkworms home. An amazing thing happened while they were at home. They ate and ate and ate and grew and grew and grew. And one day they built little cocoons around themselves. And I brought back silk cocoons, not the worms. I'm told that within that cocoon, or in the case of a butterfly, in that chrysalis, something amazing happens. All of the components that made up that caterpillar now pretty much melts, becomes soup, and out comes something radically, completely different. What was once a fat, ugly worm now is a slender, beautiful, winged creature that looks as though it was made of stained glass in the case of, you know, like a monarch butterfly meant to go from flower to flower sipping nectar. God wants to produce that kind of transformation in your life. Are you going to let him? Am I going to let him? Or are we going to let the circumstances of our life crush us beneath their weight, destined to do the same thing over and over? Make a change. Make a change. Let God transform you and me. Old things have to be let go. All things must be renewed. All things, the Bible says, all, A-L-L, -L, all things must be renewed. They got to be rearranged, reinvented, repurposed, 
so we can realize our destiny. Now, talking about that rearranging, repurposing, just like the caterpillar. In the case of a butterfly, it's called, I believe, a chrysalis or chrysalis. What's the difference between a chrysalis and some other worm? Well, a chrysalis is a caterpillar with a commitment. Now, if you were to take a walk along Pacific Grove and near Monterey, California, and you noticed in the branches of a eucalyptus tree, there was a chrysalis and you saw it move and you saw the edge of it tear and you saw this monarch butterfly trying to get out and you felt sorry for it. It was so anemic looking. It was so scrawny looking. It was so defeated. It was so tired. You wanted to help it out. And so you went and you peeled away that outer layer. You tried to open it up and give the little guy some help. You know what would happen? Well, you would cause irreparable and permanent damage. You would cripple that creature for the rest of its short life. It would never, never be able to fly and float and be lifted on the breeze. Why? Because the struggle is necessary for its survival. The struggle is necessary for it to thrive. God may be allowing a season of struggle into your life so that you have the strength and the ability and the capability to thrive and to soar in the future. As you know, I've been through such an experience and I'm going through it now. I'll tell you the truth. There have been times in the last year and a half and eight months or whatever that I thought many times it'd be so much easier just to die. Honestly, it would have been easier to give up and just die. But God had a plan for me. I wanted to live. I wanted to do more for the kingdom of Christ. I wanted to live for my wife. I didn't want to leave her a widow. I wanted to live for my children. I got married late in life. My kids are itty bitty. They're little guys. I couldn't go home. I needed to stay. I begged Jesus, have mercy on me. Don't leave my kids without a dad. And God is rebuilding me day by day by day. But the old things must be gone. I must be willing to accept my situation and embrace new things. Every day is a new thing. Every day I need my brain to be healed in new ways. I need the pathways in my brain to be made new. And I've been asking God for that every day. Struggle is needed. And part of my stroke recovery is the struggle. There are times where I feel so tired, so terrible, so uncomfortable in my own skin, with so frustrated with my own inability to function. I want to give up. But that struggle, that very struggle that I beg God, take it away, is exactly what he is using to refine me, to refresh me, to give me a rebirth. It is the struggle that hides the blessing. Maybe you find yourself in such a struggle now. Maybe you feel overwhelmed by your circumstances. Maybe you find yourself stuck in a place that you had never planned to be. Well, my friend, take another look. Could it be that the blessing God has for you is hidden in the struggle itself? Maybe this time of suffering, this trial, this hardship is the path that you need to take to greater blessings. Don't give up. 
There's hope, there's help, there's healing because Jesus is there. Put your trust in him. He'll lead you to a much better place. If you found these messages helpful at all, please comment below. Let us know how your spiritual journey is doing. Help us out by ringing that bell. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring that bell.